So now you have all the capabilities of Studio One at your fingertips in order to manipulate the sound exactly the way you want to hear it. Let's look at a couple features. If you click on the tempo track, you'll notice that the tempo reflects all the subtle changes that come from the end tempo track in Notion. Every one of these movements are reflected in the tempo track. If you want to modify them, you're certainly welcome to. You can adjust them and change them and alter them for phrasing or for dramatic effect for whatever reason you might choose. One other possibility is to apply automation envelopes to the tracks to make your instruments really uh, sing and seem very realistic. I'll show you how this is done using first violins as an example. So if we look at the first violins instrument, there are three parameters that I want to automate in these instruments. One is dynamics, the other is expression, and the third is vibrato. In order to do this, what you do is you set automation to be visible. And this changes the display of the tracks in Studio One. So for violins, I'm going to add MIDI automation tracks. So you'll notice that I selected violins, clicked display, add, remove, and it brings up this automation dialog box. And if you expand the MIDI section, these are all the parameters of the instrument that can be automated. And I know from previous experience that dynamics in Spitfire instruments is controlled by CC1 modulation. Expression is expression. So I double click these to add them. And then vibrato is controlled in Spitfire instruments by CC control 21. So I've added those three channels for automation. I hit close. And if I use this button to expand the envelopes, I now see that those three channels have been added as automation envelope channels. And these will affect only those parameters in the violin's instrument. So to record these, we need to use some sort of control surface. You could certainly draw them in if you wanted. There are tools uh, for freehand manipulation of these things. And if you're so inclined and very patient, uh, you could certainly draw these. But the easiest way to enter this information is by recording it using some sort of a fader, a control surface. I use Nectar's Panorama P1 control surface. It has a specific software implementation to work with Studio One directly, both as a mixer controller and to control parameters within the instruments. And there's an easy way to assign the instruments to a particular fader. It's pretty straightforward and it's very simple once you get used to it. You move the fader on your control surface and you right click on the automation envelope that you want that fader to control. I want the first fader to control modulation and so I'm going to assign modulation to plug in control number nine on the panorama. Once I've assigned it, I'm moving the fader and you can see that it's moving the automation level. And in a minute, when I show you how to record, you'll see that it actually controls the level as you record the automation envelope. 
So I'll assign these other two. Expression will be assigned to the next fader on my panorama. And then last but not least, uh, vibrato, if you recall, is control 21. And that's assigned to the third fader. So now I can manipulate these individually or all three at the same time. So I can follow along. It's very convenient that um, I can watch the score and view the dynamic markings and understand the hairpin effects uh, while I actually record the automation as it plays. I set this from read to latch so that it's set to record. And I typically record both modulation and expression at the same time because those two are connected. So here we go. You'll notice that the faders are controlling the modulation. So you can see that as I move the faders, and I move them very subtly, it is changing the envelope and recording my movements as I go.